Thank you. Eight. Drupal. Eight. <laughs> All right. Um, what we're going to do today is talk about getting recipes. Well, welcome to DrupalCon. This is what AA is convinced I look like. Who am I to argue? My name's Will. I've been web developing a long time. I've got about 18 years in Drupal. Um, started with 4.7. And uh, I work in the, primarily in the federal sector with a lot of initially organizations across the board. And I work at REI Systems, uh, which is a federal contractor out of DC. Been there a couple of years, never seen a coworker in person. Uh, what we're going to be doing is coming out of Drupal Forge, picking our distribution channel, our res a recipe, um, and that's going to go, that action in and of itself is actually really fast and really painless and would make a very short demo. So we're also going to take that, um, that recipe, that Drupal site that we're going to create, and we're going to push it out to one of our uh, DigitalOcean containers, which is going to create the container, it's going to be secure, it's going to put in the WAF, it's going to do a lot of really wonderful things that take a lot of time and it does it all for us and it hardens our container so we can get back to work. So on the service level, we're going to pop up our, our website, that launch ability that everyone wants, then we're going to go ahead and publish this out to a permanent server, our own server, and then we're going to talk about some of the tools if you wanted to take this to the next level. I love this process concept where we end up on DevPanel personally because what I want to try to do is get it implemented as an onboarding process. I work in the federal sector. I lose weeks of onboarding time as far as shipping out laptops, getting everyone installed, everyone brought up online. I could have somebody up in minutes with this system. Kind of amazing. But let's just publish a website first. All right, everyone was excited about the launch button. Everybody wants to be the launch button. Everyone wants to use the launch button. We're going to try something that looks a lot like the launch button today. So the launch button was presented by um, Breeze recently. It was just a little, let's get Drupal started with the star shot. Uh, we're going to be using Drup uh, Drupal Forge. It's going to put up a six-hour temporary Drupal dev website that anyone can log into, it's online, it's, it's, you've got an admin powers, you can get in there and experiment, do what you need, check out these different versions. Maybe you wanna look at, well, I'll look at the different versions you can choose from on the next area. But this is going to, in a couple minutes, faster than I'm explaining it, you could go have a fully functioning Starshot website that didn't impact your local. You didn't have to, okay, I know I could do this with my Lando, but do I really want another Lando? Is that gonna confuse my containers? Let's just get a virtual one up. Let's play with it. Let's see if it's doing what we need. Recently, um, I had my developers working on CK5 plugins. My testing folks found a very obscure bug, and the first thing I needed to do was figure out if this was our bug from our plugins or if this was CK, CK5's bug. Boom, Drupal site, play with it, test it, see where that bug really lived. Uh, if you want an ephemeral site, which is the, the, the launch way, um, all you do is do not, is you don't check this include cloud dev environment checkbox. We're going to do it, but if you don't do it, everything else, the code editing environments, the PHP admin, all of that isn't presented to you. So you want to launch an ephemeral site, just don't check that button and you get an ephemeral site. How it works, you go to Drupal Forge, you, you end up on this page, you need to scroll down. That should be on top. Um, here you get a variety of recipes you can choose from. We're gonna be using Starshot today, but maybe you wanted to use Backdrop, maybe you wanted to try out Civic CRM. You got an interview in two weeks for a Civic CRM position, you better go learn it quick. Um, maybe you, you just wanna have a Website so you can kind of convince someone what they need to, what they're going to need to learn. Tell them that Drupal is right for them. Maybe you need a nice Drupal 7 site because you don't have any more and you need to see if a plugin is going to work for you. Click it, publish it, you're going to have a website in a couple of minutes. So we're going to use Starshot. Starshot is the new exciting thing. Um, the whole idea of being able to create your own Wix, your own like fully visualized website and distribute that. Starshot looks pretty neato. We're gonna 
find out what that's all about by just creating a website and spinning it up and using it for six hours. So to do that, over there on the try free, which is a funny way to, to spell launch, you're going to just click on that and boom, you get this form. Form's pretty straightforward. There's one very important part, that checkbox right there. Um, this is going to spin up a container for you. You're not tying this into your own. In this approach, we have not done anything that's going to tie into our own personal repositories, our own personal containers or buckets or anything. This is all at the good graces of our dear Salim, who um, is going to spin up this environment within his cluster. And we get in to go in there and play and use it for six hours. So include cloud dev environment if you want to have the toys. Um, you're going to get two emails. The first one we're ignoring. It just says, OK, I got it. I'm going to go build something now. The second email has your, your access information. The important part, since we use the checkbox, is this little visit now guy. Um, otherwise, we just go to this app and log in. The initial password is like dev panel, dev panel, like it says right there. Um, so if you don't check that box, you won't see this part, and you can just go play with your dev, your dev site. You can share that URL to someone you need to. Boom. Um, so we followed that link to, we, what we're going to do is we're going to go first over to the dev URL. If you just wanted to go straight to your website, you're done. And you've, you're not touching the dev environment, you've got your site. So here we are inside um, dev panel. So a dev panel instance was spun up for us. Our uh, it spun up a container for us. We can go in and play. Six hours, go. Um, this first page, not so helpful. Um, this, the repository links are not your repository link. They're a link back to a fork of the Starshot branch. So if you go in there, you're not getting pointed to your repository. You're going back. To, you're in, if you try to push to that, you're contributing back to the community. So, but what we're looking for is this guy, the Applications tab. In the Applications tab, we've got two uh, columns. We've got the ID. And we've got the URL. So URL would be if we started back on an email and we just wanted to go to our site. But we're going to go and have a look at uh, the name ID column, which is uh, the coding environment. Sorry, first, <laughs> I did that in different order. First, we're going to look at that URL. So here's Starshock. Um, we got to the site. We logged in. We're an admin. We can do what we want. Um, everything you want to do on the site, your admin, go. Uh, that's as easy as it was. So if we skipped all that going to DevPanel, we were in our email, we just click that other link, we land here, it's passwords, DevPanel, DevPanel, um, username, password, you're inside. Great. Go play with Starshot. I'm not going to do a demo on that. Um, go have fun. There's lots of Starshot demos. So you can go home now. No. Um, so let's go back to this admin area for a second. So this is the part that personally excites me. Um, we've clicked into the code monitoring area. And if you want to learn the really a, a more powerful approach to getting here that doesn't involve launching from the control center, um, from that dev, from Drupal Forge, there's a system for publishing to your Git, having it spin, spin up your site and then linking that back into your dev panel. And you get a very much more interesting to me environment where you've got your coding activities, your VS code, your PHP admin, and you're using single source, single point sign-ons to add members to your system, allow them to code within your environment, let them pull up their branches. You can call an engineer in to help you with something. And when you're done, they're gone. They don't have your code. They could, of course, we're devs, but you're bringing people in. They don't have to spin up an environment. They're working with you. When it's all said and done, you clean up the team. I think that's amazing. That's the future. Anyway, so to start using VS Code, 
you hit that little generate token, start using uh, PHP admin, you hit that generate token, and you can launch those applications. All right. Uh, if you haven't used VS Code, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's the Microsoft uh, approach to having a code interface. It's a lot of us are probably using uh, PHP Storm. It's pretty powerful. You've got access to the marketplace. You've got um, Git access. You can work in this environment entirely. Um, on certain Department of Justice websites, uh, I'm not allowed to use uh, PHP Storm. I have to use VS Code. It's fine. It's okay. It's not what you're used to if, well, if you're not. It has to do with ownership, uh, multinational ownership and funding. Yes? Um, VS Code is an open source. Would they do VS Code instead? Because VS Code tracks. Right. So this is, this is actually not VS Code. This is the open source version of okay. VS Code okay. called Code Server. Okay. And, and this is like a browser based version of VS Code. Okay. So this is actually running in the browser, which, which it doesn't, you don't see that here, but this is actually running in a browser, and it's the open source version okay. of VS Code. Yeah. This is Salim, who's behind it all. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm sitting in the back of this whole <laughs> And it's his, it's his tab that our VMs are running on, so right. thank you, Salim. Yeah. Um, you're in here, you're editing code, you're able to have real-time responses because you're not, in this particular instance, we're not committing back to the repo, spinning up. Um, we're working fairly live, a little old-fashioned, but that's what this is doing. You can get into the repo process. And that's another video if you search for my name, Kirschheimer, um, dev panel. I've got a really nice walkthrough of going all the way from pulling in Pulling, building your dev, your DDEV or whatever, all the way up to repo deployment into this system. It's, it's very interesting, I think. <laughs> um, but here we are, we're working in a full coder environment. You saw that link before to PHP admin that puts you in the database. There's a whole lot of movements going on about um, real-time updating, module updating, that I think make this interface and this approach a lot more relevant. We have a gentleman here who's, was it you who's running webs, 12 websites? We had someone yesterday who has a whole, he's running his dev, uni sorry, uh, running his dev universe through this system. Over a dozen websites I thought I saw on that screen, impressive. And again, the opportunity to run this on a small, cheap laptop, um, run this on your iPad, seems pretty doable to me. Um, so now you're able to save yourself in a pinch. You're not dragging that laptop off to every party you're going to and <laughs> having to be ready to respond. Yeah. Freedom. Um, I imagine you could do it with just some meta goggles. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Uh, we had the request for DigitalOcean. Yay. All right. Uh, post launch button. Launch button. Um, all right, let's go over to your DigitalOcean account. We're going to create a droplet. Um, we're going to name ours. So we're doing the New York City region deployment. Naming when we get to it's actually really important way later in this process when you're trying to figure out which container you're deploying to and all these things. If you can give yourself some hints, get your project names in there, something like that, you're going to appreciate yourself later for this. Um, so we're picking our New York region. We're in my, um, we had to go over to my DigitalOcean account. We're creating a, a droplet and we're selecting. New York in this case, that's not relevant. Um, we're, we're choosing Ubuntu 22, not 24. Um, this was at, I was given that advice, a little more stable for, for our needs. Um, we're using the basic account, which is enough for this particular process. Um, and we're using the 12 meg. It's been suggested that the six meg isn't quite hardy enough to handle this. So 12 bucks a month to run that server. Um, we're going to use an SSH key. 
I apologize, I already had mine up there, so I won't go through the upload key process, but I have faith in y'all. And we're going to tag this with uh, Drupal Forge demo. Give yourself useful names. Give yourself useful names all the way along. Not useful enough. And we hit, we hit that create but, uh, droplet button. This was the step to spin, spin up the droplet. When we go to deploy, it's going to hard, um, Salim's team has set it up so it's gonna harden that droplet for us. We're gonna end up with all of those basic little functionalities that you hate remembering to set up that when you do it once every six months or a year, that's gonna all arrive hardened up pretty sweet. Um, okay, it's building us a container. Go grab some coffee, check, take the dog out, It'll be done in about 10 minutes. Um, we're back to, make, now we need to make sure that we're ready to deploy to it. We don't want to deploy to a droplet that hasn't finished setting up yet. So we're going to just hit that console button way over there. And that's going to bring up that we're, we're not ready yet. Okay, we're ready now. Um, super relevant. If you're doing the uh, DigitalOcean approach, your username's root. If you're using the AWS, it's root. No, just kidding. It's Ubuntu. Um, so that username changes on each account. So root. All right, we're good. We closed the terminal. Um, we've got some information on this page that's relevant to our setup going forward. We've got our IP there. We've got our container name. Good stuff. Back on our container, we went to VPS right here. Um, we selected the connect to VPS here. And we populated this form with the information that we gathered. We've got our key. We have our um, username. And we've got our public IP. So the information that we gathered on that last page is what we're using to populate this small form. You didn't need to do all this for your ephemeral site. You need to do all this because we're going to publish this to my own AWS, my own DigitalOcean. And at that point, conceptually, you could pull dev panel out of this equation. There's a whole lot of reasons not to. And the reason those involve that other video, dev panel, Kerchimer, it'll pop up, where you're using that for, to automate your workflow all the way from your normal, you're in Lando, you're publishing out, you've got some actions, they're triggering your builds automatically and doing your deployments. That whole dev cycle becomes managed. Different presentation. So we've, we're about to deploy to our container. Um, there's some links here. There's some discussions. Like, don't click the deployment link. <laughs> um, we're working with VPS. VPS, connect VPS, fill out the form. All right, um, in progress over there. Um, it's another chance to go stretch that shoulder. Get out. 10 minutes of your life. Go. Um, we're going to jump past the AWS light sale. If you want to see the AWS light sale, go to my slideshow. There's also videos over on uh, uh, Drupal Forge that get you through this process. Maybe you have to jump over to the dev panel videos. But um, same information presented. We're just talking about go, to, go there, so, uh, search for light sale, hit that little star so you can find it next time if you're not in there very much. And once you've done that, um, we're going to create an instance, we're going to build out the space, we're going to upload our key, we're going to pick our $7 version, and get, get, I think it was, oh sorry, our $12 version to get an, enough to run it. We're going to give it a nice useful name, not that name I gave there because it's not useful enough. Um, we want to tell it what server we're at. We want to specify what project we're using. You can use this system to publish multiple sites to the same container. Um, the path URL that, um, that gets created on the server, which I have a copy of in a later slide, mm -hmm. is specific to the deployment cycle. So it's not all living in the same web folder. Um, that's super handy if you want to, you've got a bunch of tiny little sites where you're running a larger server and you think you can pull, pull multi-site off on that. Great. 
Um, we gave it a good name. Da da da. Ubuntu, not root. So that's the big difference between the two platforms. Um, check to make sure it was up. Get back there, fill out the information, get your key in there. It's primarily the same process, just with those slight changes to the bucket creation. If you want to see, if you want those slides a little slower for light, for the AWS part of it, just hit the slide deck and you can see it, or go check out the videos, which are pretty straightforward. Um, we've got two containers uh, for deployment here, two deployment cycles set up. And so once the in-progress spinner is done, um, and you'll get some notifications on the right-hand side during that process, but just leave it all be, they're just informational. Um, we should see container-ready information, 10 minutes. That was it. Your code just got over to the container and your website's built on the container. If you want to set up a domain name resolution for your custom domain, we'll, we'll just touch on the services used for that at the end. But you just created your droplet or you, and you just pushed your site up there. That's pretty exciting. Yay. Um, okay, so we're in the overview tab. Finding the right tab is a little tricky. Um, we're going to, oh, did I skip deployment? I did. I'm sorry. I thought we were on this deployment already. All right. Deploy to VPS. That's the link. I think it's this guy right there. And that's the one you're after. This is where your drop down, your important naming conventions. <laughs> um, give yourself, be, be a friend to yourself. Name these things in a way that's going to help you find them in two months when you can't remember what site you were building. Um, we're deploying stretch, always stretch. Um, so that deployed your code. It went up there. We, we just hit that drop down. We just hit deploy. What happened along the way? Well, all those things that you forget to do. Um, we were using a lighter version of dev panel. If you come in through those repo building processes, you get more opportunity, you get to your own repos um, pointed to it, you, you're triggering actions. We came in through the let's create a droplet and deploy approach. Um, if you come in through my get repo into dev panel approach, you're, you're ending up with new tool, more tools. And then there's opportunities for upgrades. Do you need your own cluster? Are you acting as a vendor for other people? Um, it, are you trying to, you, you have your own Kubernetes cloud that you'd like it to build for you, and now you're going to go host everyone there. Um, these all are about coming into the dev panel side and skipping the Drupal Forge, let's have a site right now approach. All right, so, um, so we configured Ubuntu during that. Go ahead. Is there an option to set it up with Nginx? Um, there, there, if you're setting it up on Kubernetes, there's an Nginx proxy on the front. Uh, it's actually, I think we use Kong, which is an Nginx version, which is a version of Nginx uh, that's running in the front. Uh, and in the back, it's using Apache. Because Apache, we use mod security with Apache. And that is, has a built-in WAF, uh, which is a web application firewall. So you get the best of both worlds. There's an there's a, there's a Nginx with a proxy on the front uh, in Kubernetes, and then Apache up there. When you're deploying to a VPS, no, because there's only Apache, and then there's uh, a built-in WAF that you get, the web application firewall that you get. We were using Nginx before, but we, had, we switched to Apache. We got our PHP, uh, we, had, we had our new versions installed, we had our MySQL installed, we had a web app firewall installed, we had basic protections installed for us, um, top 10 vulnerabilities taken care of, um, configured all our ports, set up our folders, set up our folder resolution for URL behaviors, all of those things were just done for us. We didn't have to go back to that cheat sheet we use when we launch our clients' websites. 
Um, it's just done. Um, the Drupal Forge dev environment is still intact. We deployed over um, a copy of it over to our droplets. Um, we can deploy again, so if you're doing a dev stage prod um, example. If you're treating this as I'm just going to work on dev panel and I'm not going to deploy out to other containers, um, you're done. But, um, and you want to think of that as your prod. If you're looking at these other containers and you want to go with the dev stage prod um, pre-flight, then you're able to deploy from that container with that little drop down to whichever container you wanted to uh, deploy to that day. If you're running multiple sites, you're able to select, I want to deploy to that particular container. And so you've got all your little sites on this little guy over here, but you've got that one sales site that kicks off once a year on its own little machine. Uh, if you want to get your custom domain resolution going, you go over to Cloudflare. You can figure that up, and that access your front end for your domain resolution and points over to your container. So you're not having to deal with the DNS registry aspects on your container yourself. It's coming in through Cloudflare. Kind of nice, especially if you're looking at, again, scaling those containers different times a year for different kinds levels of activity. You're doing all that up there. Um, you want to go big. You want to manage your clusters of servers. You want to manage multiple sites. Uh, you want to get those GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket integrations with your deployment keys and actions. Um, get all your proper branch handling, development workflows, auto-scaling clusters, team development. I really think team development is the exciting part about this. Um, I had this vision the first time I heard about it of every Chick-fil-A in the country running off dev panel where they just log their terminal interface in and their cash register comes up. Why should it be true? Well, it's any, it's any automated web appliance you want. Automatically, they log in and there's their appliance. That's crazy. That, that team, team development, and I just add them. I just delete them. Oh, the store's ready. I open that store. Um, all of that user access, single point authority, adding new developers for a project, removing those developers when it's done, controlling where, not, you know if you go home and you search for .sql, you've got a whole bunch of SQL somewhere in your backup system that might be a crime because it's in your backup archive and you're not supposed to do that if you're a fed and all that stuff happening and you're like, at the end of every project you need to go through and scrub your system if you want to remain legally compliant. Are you doing that? It's all done. It's, you never have the database. You never have the code. It's just in the cloud, and you turn the devs on. You turn them off real time. Amazing. I, someday I want to do a demo of that where I have like, my kids start hacking the system over here, and I remove that person and add another developer, and it's all it, the process is seamless and perfect, and it's beautiful to watch. Um, Blue-green deployments, et cetera. So start with the free version. Go have fun. Um, get it running. You've, it's it's quick, it's easy. You got your container, you're paying your container bill if you want to do that deployment. Um, your server was set up. You're starting to get more involved, you want to do lots of sites. Um, I would love to get this into the government sector. Um, it's, it's, I think it's so important. So right now, I think of Salim in direct competition with Bill Gates. When uh, you log into these big government servers and you're on some virtual Windows desktop trying to work through that to try to access your sites, try to get permission to install software. No, you don't want to install software. I have all the software you need on each of your containers. You will not be adding additional software and the one you didn't think of to ask for is already pre-installed because you work in a team and I want you to have a new application and I put it there and it showed up the next morning when you logged in. I'd love to get this into government, and eventually I will. So, um, amazing. AWS, DigitalOcean, others will arrive. Those are just the containers that are currently plugged in. And uh, again, AI thinks I look like this. So, um, that is the wrong URL. <laughs> I, was looking at, I was reading Vice this morning. Um, that's supposed to be my Drupal account link that's at the beginning of the video, so I'll, fi I'll fix that later. But um, Vice was kind of spicy this morning. Lots of neat stuff going on in the world. 
Um, questions? You mentioned government. Is it FedRAMP compliant? Uh, it's, I'll, I'll answer that. Sure. Is it FedRAMP compatible? <laughs> not compliant. Uh, it, is, it is compliant because it actually runs in their FedRAMP account. So it can be, so I say com compatible because if you have a FedRAMP compliant account, then it can run. And since I manage aspects of the GSA, I have to emphasize this is not my, my, my any government organization that I'm involved with opinion. This is like I manage the FedRAMP compliant page. So I can't agree with that until it's on the site. So, um, but I, I look forward to the day when it's right. on my list of FedRAMP vendors. Yeah. It's and just I'll, not I'll there. I'll tell you just the same thing as Drupal. Like when you say is Drupal FedRAMP compliant, right? Yeah. right? Uh, it's, you, you can't say Drupal is FedRAMP compliant, but Drupal is FedRAMP compatible. Because if you, when you run Drupal in a FedRAMP compliant environment, then it's FedRAMP compliant. So it's, it's the same exact thing. It's like it's a piece of software that you run in a FedRAMP compliant environment. And I work with the competency and compliance teams as well within the government. And I'll say that, um, are you using something that's not core? <laughs> so um, I've got organizations where I have to not only, I've got Department of Justice sites where not only do I have to get permission for every custom module, but I have to do little bios on everyone who contributes to the custom module. <laughs> um, so is it FedRAMP compliant? There's, there's more security behind Drupal than anything else I've ever seen. The modules are quick and easy to read, and we do have, within the federal government, we carefully look over every single module that comes into play. Um, and, but I can't say that yet. Next question. I think it's pretty exciting. And the, where, where I think it's exciting is that opportunity to automate your DevOps. If you're, um, if you're working in a system where you want these containers coming up and down, I hate precious little things servers servers where you have to, oh, is it okay that I got to get those files? I want everything to deploy. I want, I want. oh, if they hacked my server, what server? Delete, republish. That's the future I want. I don't want v vulnerable servers. I want to see a CDN in front of all this stuff if I'm in big production. Um, but right now, you know, Drupal's pretty solid. You're doing little sites. Maybe you don't need it. But I would still stick CDN up in front, at which point you don't need Cloudflare, you're using something else. But I think it's a great product. I think it's amazing at, at container optimization. And as someone who, again, I have got my cheat sheet notes for like things I need to do once a year on the server, and I have to go back to them every time because that's not my job. I've, I've owned a web serving company, well, that was 25 years ago. <laughs> and so having everything spin up. Is it a managed service? We're getting pretty close. Um, I like it. All right. Yes. For local dev, is it just Lando, or can you see that, or both? It's agnostic. Um, so this is, if we go back to what we were doing way up here, um, the Anyway, somewhere in there, there was the tools window. That's all through the browser. It's agnostic of whatever you're doing on your local. In my demo, where I go up through GitHub and spin it all around, um, I'm doing. I've got. I think I'm using Lando in there. I might be using DDev, but I actually show starting with the core, um, the core Drupal. Then I pull in a container, and I've got that repo open. It's a few years old, but it. Um, if you search for Kerchimer GitHub. There's a, you'll see in the pull request list where I pull in um, a repo that just has the Lando stuff and just has the DDEV and I slice it all up. And the trick to adding the action, which I go over in the video, um, in order to get GitHub to talk back to this system to spin up the containers is still agnostic from what you're choosing to develop in because you've got a different folder, just like any continuous integration system where you're setting up your deployment cycle up in top, this just becomes another part of your deployment cycle. It kicks in when you send to GitHub. GitHub gets out, triggered out to here with your key. It spins up your container. Does that make sense? 
So it does not matter what you're using it for because all of this behavior is acting in the cloud. You're potentially, everyone's working a different way. So if you're going the route where you start in the repo, your Lando people are here, you've got your screen people over here, you're committing back to the repo, you're making your pull requests and your branches, and doing your deployments, and it's, it does not matter where you're coming from. Meanwhile, you've got your friend who's really good at migration, and you just need him to come in and solve a couple problems for you, and you don't want him to have to spend a day setting up his, his local. You're just sharing out this container. He's coming in there, doing some code editing, and, deploy, and committing that back and deploying it. You onboarded him or her uh, in five minutes if he's done it before. You know, all you did is go in and add it, his her um, there. So that team control that happens on a single environment doesn't spin up like a new environment for them necessarily. They don't get their own. The video, I think I did that in the video where I added a member and took them out. I believe I did. Um, it's been a couple of years. They're getting access, their account is getting access to your code through your granting them access, but their access is tied to this interface. So this interface gets access to your repo that you granted them. They get access to this. Their code environment comes up on their web browser and they're coding against code and credentials loaded behind that web browser. They didn't ever, I don't, they didn't necessarily ever see the repo name. They certainly never had access to the repo logins. It was all managed by the front end. That sounds right. There, there are multiple ways to do it. Okay. So, yeah, if you want a team member to have their own branch and so on, if you want them to come in temporarily to work on your branch, then you can do that. If you want them to have their own branch, you get them to get access to their own branch. And I think it kind of comes in a little similar to Enterprise Pantheon, if you've had those like spin up container per branch type behaviors. Puzzled faces. Any more questions? We have time. Going back to the top. We want to try Starshot today. Someone you know wants to try Starshot. You've got it. You've got a spun up container where you're logged in in just a few minutes and it's spun up this container for you. Use the include cloud uh, environment if you want to play with those other toys. Don't, and you get a simplified email that doesn't include the dev URL section of this. They just get an application URL. Um, and you've got your Starshot up and running with a, whatever the latest version is today, now, instantly. All right, final call for questions? All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.